Good morning. Welcome to week five in comparative models in Palestine in its part one. Our topic for today is uh, model police systems. So uh, here we are going to familiarize ourselves with the different police systems in the world, make uh, comparisons among these police systems in terms of organization, structure, and effectiveness. In this lesson, different police systems of several countries are presented for comparative analogy as to how effective and efficient in its law enforcement. And uh, the basis of modeling police system are uh, the continental policing, developing police system, and the modern system. So continental policing is uh, a traditional in nature as it based its crime control efficiency, efficiency to the number of arrests and people being put to jail for punishment. I will repeat the basis of uh, crime control efficiency is the number of arrests and people being put to jail for punishment. The uh, developing police system, this system are those that are under transition from their former practices but have adopted democratic form of governance. And then the modern system uh, uses measurement of crime control efficiency and effectiveness based on absence of crime or low crime rate to include citizen satisfaction in terms of peace and order that propels progress. So let us now have the uh, first uh, basis of modeling police system, which is the Continental Policing Practices Model. So uh, the country under uh, the countries under this uh, model, we have the first, the Egypt police. The Siwa Oasis in Egypt is a place with little or no crime. The population of 23,000 consists of 11 tribes who are the descendants of ancient Greeks and said that Plato himself fashioned his model of perfect government in the Republic there. The inhabitants practice a moderate form of Islamic justice, rejecting Sharia punishment and embracing our law or the law of tradition. So how is this operate? How, how uh, will this law operate? or apply. Conflicts are resolved by a tribal council and there are no jails or prisons. The last known crime occurred around 1950 was an act of involuntary manslaughter. The typical punishment for wrongdoing is social ostracization or shunning. Paano ba yung social ostracization? This is the process of excluding someone who is uh, a violator or offender from a society or group. Okay? So uh, this type of society is an excellent example of the folk communal or informal justice system. The second country under the continental, we have the or China. Okay, so we will have uh, their police organization. For its overview, the first police force comparable to present day police was established in 1667 under King Louis the Fourteenth in France. Although modern police usually trace their origins to the 1800 establishment of the Marine Police in London, the Glasgow Police and the Napoleonic Police of Paris. 
The first modern police force is also commonly said to be the London Metropolitan Police, established in 1829, which promoted the preventive rule of police as a deterrent to urban crime and disorder. So our uh, explanation will show that China is somewhat under uh, the colony of several countries. No? So itong una in 1667, uh, this is a police force under King Louis XIV in France. And then uh, in 1829, we have the London Metropolitan Police. So whoever that colonized China at that time uh, established their uh, police force. Law enforcement, however, constitutes only part of policing activity. Policing has included an array of activities in different situations, but the predominant ones are concerned with the preservation of order. In societies in the late 18th century and early 19th century, this developed within the context of maintaining the class system and the protection of private property. Alternative names for police force include constabulary, gendarmerie, gendarmerie, police department, police service, crime prevention, protective services, law enforcement agency or Garda Shokana, and members can be police officers. Troopers, Sheriffs, constables, rangers, peace officers, or guard. Russian police and police of the Soviet era, Stern Europe, are called militia. Okay. We will uh, move on to the historical secret police organizations. Uh, in ancient uh, China. So, law enforcement in ancient China was carried out by prefects. The notion of a prefect in China has existed for thousands of years. The prefecture system developed in both the Chu and Jin kingdoms of the spring and autumn period. In Jin, dozens of prefects were spread across the state, each having limited authority and employment period. In ancient China, prefects were government officials, appointed local magistrates, who in turn were appointed by the head of the state, usually the emperor of the dynasty. The prefects oversaw the civil administration of their prefecture or jurisdiction. So, ulitin natin, who are those uh, prefects in China? In ancient China, they were the government officials appointed the uh, local magistrates who uh, oversaw the civil administration of their prefecture or their jurisdiction. Prefects usually reported to the local magistrate just as modern police report to judges. Under its prefect were sub-prefects who held collectively with law enforcement of the area. Some prefects were responsible for handling investigations, much like modern police detectives. Eventually, the concept of the prefecture system spread to other cultures such as Korea and Japan. Law enforcement in ancient China was uh, also relatively progressive, allowing for female prefects. Recent court trials of prefects in modern popular culture include Jet Li's portrayal of the nameless prefect in the movie Hero. Up to present, China still holds to the concept of prefecture system of policy. 
Then we have the third country under continental policy. We have Saudi Arabia. So uh, the uh, Saudi Arabia police system is highly centralized. During Royal Decree 1950, King Abdul Al-Aziz formed the Saudi Arabia Police Force. In 1960s, the modernization of police forces uh, provide policemen with radio communication equipment and vehicles. They have also what we call the General Directorate, which was formed under the rule of the king and supervised all the police function in the kingdom. Then we have also Ministry of Interior, which is in charge of all police matters, and the Ministry of Interior General Directorate, which is a subordinate of Ministry of Interior. And uh, this Ministry of Interior General Directorate is in charge with the maintenance of internal security. Let us move on to the Internal Security Police Organization of uh, Saudi Arabia. We have the Coast Guards. Their primary mission is to prevent smuggling. Uh, it deploys its units from parts along Persian Gulf and Red Sea. Then we have Frontier Police Force. They are uh, patrols on lands, borders, and carry out custom inspections. So, and under the internal security, we have also the public security force and the special security force. Then uh, there are four general directorates of the uh, uh, police force of Saudi Arabia, offices of the deputy ministers for administration, national security affairs, immigration and naturalization, and the internal security forces colleagues. We have two divisions of police force in Saudi Arabia. We have the first investigative police force, who are responsible in handling investigations of criminal cases, works under the General Directorate of Investigation. So this investigative police force is under the General Directorate of Investigation. Uh, General Directorate of Investigation uh, conducts criminal investigation in addition to performing the domestic security and country intelligence. And then uh, the Directorate of Intelligence is responsible for intelligence condition and the coordination of intelligence tasks. Now let us have the second division of police force in Saudi Arabia. We have the Security Police Force, who is responsible for maintenance of peace and order throughout the country. Uh, under Security Police Force, we have the Religious Police, or what we call the Motawa. Uh, this is an unusual, if not unique, internal security force in Saudi Arabia. It is autonomous and highly visible. And uh, it ensures that strict assertion of Islamic code of conduct throughout the nation is uh, implemented. Let us move to the police ranking in Saudi Arabia. We have the director, which is the head of Saudi Arabia police. 
This is the highest ranking officer in the Ministry of Interior and it has the power to appoint officers of the local police force. And then we have uh, the Sheikh who is appointed by the king. He supervises certain regions in the country. He has the authority to handle matters related to public safety and has power to punish offenders of the civil law. Okay, let us move on to the second uh, model system. And uh, this is the developing country's police system. We have the first country under this. We have the police in Congo. So, saan ang Zaid? Zaid was, uh, what is Zaid? Or where is Zaid? Zaid was the name of a sovereign state in Central Africa between 1971 and 1997. Now, it is already known as Democratic Republic of the Gendarmes Armed Police Office. And uh, so, Zai is uh, the the former name of uh, Republic of Congo. So formerly, it is called the Republic of Zion. Now, uh, it is already known as the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Okay? The development of police forces in Zaire has been anything but a steady continuous process. Those elements that perform the police function in contemporary Zaire descent or uh, they came from a variety of colonial and post-colonial structures that have been organized. So, ang Zaire din na ito ay... Uh, naging uh, uh, colony ng iba't ibang bansa. That's why it states here that uh, yung contemporary yung police function in contemporary Zaire descend or came from a variety of colonial and post-colonial structures that have been reorganized, renamed, absorbed by other services, or disbanded altogether. Police duties are assigned to both military and civilian security organizations, often simultaneously, and have undergone alternating periods of centralization, decentralization, and transfer of authority. In all cases, however, the performance of the police has been mediocre at best. So, hindi masyadong maganda. In worst, completely dysfunctional and occasionally criminal. So, may mga anomalya ng mga police forces uh, uh, during the early times doon sa Zayat. From its founding in 1888, the force public fulfilled the basic functions of uh, both a police force and an army. So, merong na-create na uh, police force in 1888 
enzyme which is the force public. This dual role caused tension within the organization and was a major factor in its poor discipline in lack of effectiveness. So, hindi maganda yung uh, merging of uh, police force and army. Because of the requirement to act as police force, members of the colonial army were dispersed throughout the country where they normally came under the control of local administrators. This dual rule continued virtually unchanged until shortly after World War I, when the Belgian administration reorganized the force into two organizations. We have the garrison troops and territorial service troops. So this time, uh, they are again under the colony of Belgium. No? And uh, the Belgian administration reorganized the force, yung uh, force public, into two organizations. We call it the, they call it the garrison troops and territorial service troops. The garrison troops were intended to serve as a military force oriented against an external threat, while the territorial service troop assumed the role of gendarmerie or police force. So, parang nag-separate na ngayon under the Belgian administration. Hindi na siya merged. Although the territorial service troops remained an integral part of the force public and could revert to the controls of the commander, elements were deployed throughout the country under the operational control of the territorial administrators. Although this change theoretically created two distinct organizations, what are they? Uh, ano yung pagbabago? The separation of powers was not routinely applied. Garrison troops gradually came under the control of the civilian administration and acted like a police force. In uh, 1959, the territorial service troops were redesignated as gendarmes, although their duties and responsibilities uh, remained essentially unchanged. In addition to the territorial service troops, there were two other police forces existed during the colonial period. We have a colonial period of uh, Belgium. The chief's police, a rural force based in the local territories, maintained order and also functioned as messengers, jailers, and court attendants. This force uh, served under the local chiefs and had no regional or national command structure. Although its members wore uniforms and maintained internal order, they did not carry weapons and receive little, little training. During the immediate post-independence period, these forces became, in effect, private armies. The chaos of the immediate post-independence period, along with the departure of the experienced officer corps, precipitated the disintegration of the constabulary forces. The United Nations restored a semblance of order, but the central government faced a long and tedious task of rebuilding its security forces. During the next four years, United Nations and other foreign advisors instituted training programs in an effort to rehabilitate the police. Nigerian detachment established on the job training programs and a limited number of Belgian police returned as advisors. The United States also initiated a broad assistance program to provide specialized training arms and equipment. The Belgians continuing into the mid-1960s completed the task of 
restoring coherence to police organizations. The increase in the number of provinces from 6 to 21 also exacerbated lalo pang pinalala yung uh, proseso, no? As each new province achieved controls of its provincial police force, it inflated its size. And these organizations began to resemble provincial armies. Moboto's assumption of power in 1965 ended this trend, however. In December 1966, Moboto removed the police from provincial control, standardized police organization and equipment, and centralized control under the Ministry of Interior and Security in 1993. The 1966 law establishing the National Police gave it responsibility for regular police functions in both urban and rural areas. This new force with an authorized strength of 25,000 absorbed many personnel from the overgrown provincial forces while politically unreliable or undesirable elements were largely called. The uh, reorganization was effective in reducing local paramilitary threats to the regime's authority, but it did not significantly improve the performance of basic police functions. Furthermore, the deployment of the national police was limited for the most part to urban centers. Responsibility for internal security and public order in the rural areas. Rest A and C. Then uh, we will proceed to the second country under developing countries. We have the Royal Bahamas Police Force. So uh, Royal uh, Bahamas Police Force is the primary line of defense protection for Bahamian citizens. As such, the members of the force deserve the full support and cooperation of the government and of citizens in the execution of their responsibilities. Since coming to office in 1992, the Free National Movement uh, has undertaken substantial action to upgrade and enhance both the manpower and material condition of the police force by increasing the number of police recruits, upgrading and expanding training and retraining programs available at the police college for recruits, junior and mid-level police officers, increasing the police vehicle fleet and upgrading the police garage and opening two new police stations at Nassau and Meeting Streets and the Walt Road in the vicinity of Market Streets and uh, undertaking the construction of a third station in Stern, New Providence of Elizabeth States and Colony Village. Upgrading also during 1997, the police communication system, the grant of long overdue promotions to the serving officers, and increased salaries to serving police officers, and improving the conditions of service of police officers. It also includes legislation to provide for a police association and an extension of the mandatory retirement age of police officers. To uh, build upon this, the pre-national movement government 
uh, completed the upgrade of police communication system, achieved and maintained a police complement of, of no less than 2,500 officers, provided upgraded training locally and internationally for junior and senior police officers in criminal investigation, forensic uh, ballistic and crime scene investigation technique, increased opportunities for training attachment in the United Kingdom, Canada, and the United States of America, for senior officers likely to hold command post. Enhanced insurance coverage for all police officers, complete the review of police salary scales and increase the salaries of police uh, officers. Further enhance fairness in promotion uh, exercises of the police force. Establish an independent civilian police board to hear appeals from disciplinary decisions by the Commissioner of Police and accelerate community policing programs throughout New Providence, Grand Bahamas, and the large family islands. And let us uh, proceed to the third country under uh, developing countries uh, police system. We have the rural Papua New Guinea constabula. So the Royal uh, Papua New Guinea Constabulary is a police force with jurisdiction throughout uh, all of Papua New Guinea. So let us have their, its history. The rural Papua New Guinea Constabulary was formed from two predecessor bodies that existed prior to the independence of Papua New Guinea. The Royal Constabulary initially established by the Australian Colonial Administration. So, ito yung unang nag, uh, nag, nag colony sa kanila, sumakop sa kanila. So, I repeat, the Royal Constabulary initially established by the Australian Colonial Administration as a part of setting up Papua in the late 19th century. And the new Guinea police force, which covered the former German, former German New Guinea and British New Guinea, also set up by Australia, initially during World War I, and formalized as part of the League of Nations mandate in, of 1920. The constabulary played a significant role resisting the Japanese occupation of New Guinea during World War II. The two colonial territories were gradually amalgamated during and after World War II, leading to the merger of the two forces. The structure was retained when Papua New Guinea gained independence in 1975, although the name shifted from Rural Papua and New Guinea Constabulary to the present name, which is uh, Rural Papua New Guinea Constabulary. Parang inalis lang yung N. No? That was in 1972. Let us look into the organization of the Royal uh, Papua New Guinea Constabulary. So this is uh, a part of the law and justice sector of the government of uh, Papua New Guinea, the uh, Royal Papua New Guinea Constabulary. This uh,
Force is headquartered in Pune Dubo, a suburb, a suburb of Port Moresby, the capital city in the National Capital District. As of 2008, Police Commissioner Gary Baki, the then uh, Police uh, Commissioner, with several Deputy Commissioners having responsibility for organizational functions and regions. And uh, here, the Royal Papua New Guinea Constabulary has been aided in the past by various Australian initiatives, including supplying police forces and providing hundreds of millions of Australian dollars in assistance with budget, equipment, and staffing. This aid is uh, government. Uh, this aid is governed, I should say, I'm sorry, under the 1989 Treaty on Development Cooperation and has been carried out in several uh, five-year phases. So, for example, in phases two of the aid project, Australia budgeted the 80 million Australian dollars to deploy 53 full-time officers and material support. And then on the phase three of the same uh, program, so a proposal for an enhanced cooperation program with over 200 officers dispatched to aid in operation in 2004. So this end our uh, first part, we are going to continue on this uh, part two in just a while.